<laughs> These Shangon specimens. Oh, wow. That one, nice scepters. You guys want to say the name of your business on, on the internet? Crystal House. Crystal House? Mm, yes. And this is at RGGM. You uh, come here every year? Boot number 40. Yes. Number 40. Yeah, you yeah. come here every year? Yeah. yeah. I want to show you guys this rose quartz. So I've been after this for a while, but this is not Brazilian rose quartz. This is Afghanistan rose quartz. So rose quartz normally you see in the carved points or you know carved spears, but you hardly ever see it terminate. You don't see that color. And it came from tourmaline pockets. These are spectacular. And I'm trying to convince her to help me get this, let me get this. You one. want both? I, I'd like I, to get both. Well, and the guy working the booth said people have been looking at him. Eh, la spirale du temps. The spiral of time, right? French name, yep. And uh, okay, these concretions are called uh, Gogot. We don't know where the name's coming from, right? But uh, what we know about them, uh, the sand is about 30 million euro. And there were three phases of formation. The last one was the last ice age. Uh, they found all around Paris in the sand deposits. Sometimes you find some, sometimes you don't. And according to the grain, you can see, you can, I mean, you can say, oh, that's the, that location, that's another one. Uh, if you go to Versailles Castle, you will be able to see some displayed in the garden around the fountain. Right? Oh, really? Yep, yep, yep. Uh, there is a French company who made glass. They use that sand because it's a tiny grain oh. and almost 100% pure. Wow. NASA used to get the sand when they used for the, for the, uh, the shuttle, you know, the tiles, protection, yeah. when they, for the heat, you know. When they're coming back, they use that sand, very pure. I think they're all beautiful. They're all, they're all unique. Huh? They're all unique, and uh, there are two major ones in that country: Yale University and a, a Washington Natural Museum. They're about uh, I don't know in in feet, but in meters, it's about two meters high. Really. Wow. Yeah. Never like seen the gold one either, like that over there. Oh yeah. Yes, some come sometimes with a bit of uh, iron oxide. Uh -huh. But uh, you know, you, with a bit of treatment, you, you know, you can take it out. I like the, the product is called iron out. Right. Oh, yeah. Okay. Just make a bath of it and, it, boop, and that, yep, that would be going. I mean, what amazing natural sculptural art pieces, huh? Look at this one up here. This big one. Oh my gosh, that one is like perfect. It's flawless. You know that one. It's just it's kind of like looking at clouds. It's up to the imagination. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, they are like clouds. Those golden ones out here. Ooh, the one with the hole. Oh, I gotta look at that one. I mean, look how cool that is. I'm very attracted to the the one with the iron oxide I like in there the iron too. Yeah. Ones too. Chile? No, Argentina. Oh, Argentina. Brazil. Brazil. Campo del Cielo, Uruazu. You want me to try to pick that up? Is that yeah, what you're saying? It. <laughs> okay. It's heavier than it looks. Huh? Heavy, heavy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that wow, true? that came from space. Yeah, that came from outer Can space. you believe it? We're looking at NWA meteorites, which is Northwest Africa. These are chondrites, so they're the stony meteorites. You see? So that's where it was yeah. coming into yeah. the atmosphere. Yeah. It's awesome. Oh, nice. Yeah. He's got a whole table full of yeah. really cool meteorites here. I mean, these are big ones. He also has lunar slices here. Beautiful lunar slices. Pieces you can see the fusion crust on. Real nice shape on that one. Some regmaglyphs. Look at that piece. Whoa, Libyan desert glass. Yeah, oh meteorites. man, if you put a light behind that one. We're at Ancient Earth Trading Company. And look what we found. It's a shell with, and is that the ludlamite on the outside there? Yeah, we have ludlamite on the exterior. This one may not have the vivianite. The combination isn't all that common. So it's a fossilized snail shell? No, a gastropod. They look like a moon snail, vivianite, and cymbersite in this case. Ludlamite in the Vivianite in the center here of this large gastropod mouth. I don't know if you can get oh, the light yeah. on the gem on the inside there. But yeah, it's just a one. Very few searches come up with it. Uh, an occurrence from the St. Maurice show in France in 2015. A dealer there had a specimen. 
And then here's the mouth oh, of the yeah. snail. Still really well preserved. Crystals on the back. That's Your really phone. neat. <laughs> that is else. really cool. All right, and you're Aaron. Yep. So nice to meet you. Thank you for sharing those with us. Yeah. Oh, look at that. It's sold. Look, they sold the, the nice specimen of aquamarine. We're at Eight Treasure International Company. Look at all that color. Wow. Okay, so pink fluorite from Pakistan. That is gorgeous. Oh, I love and then the clarity of that. What are those? The aquamarine? Aqu aquamarine? Oh, really yeah, it's so clear. It's like a seafoam green. Um, yeah. Uh, shiga. From oh. Pakistan, Shiga. Oh. And then the Kunzai. from Afghanistan, Kunzai. Oh, that's a huge topaz there. Look how look how big that is. Uh, about a foot long, <laughs> that topaz uh, on Matrix. Huge aquamarine. And then that pink fluoride again. That one's with muscovite. Oh my gosh, look at that aquamarine in the back on yeah. all bite. It almost like fades into a pink. Yeah, it's uh, pink or like a uh, double color. Oh, yeah. wow, I love that. It almost has like a, a tourmaline sort of look yeah. with that bicolor. Oh, that is a frosty, delicious unicorn mineral there. That's a really nice fluorite. I love that it comes in peach too. I think this is my favorite one right here. And quartz, where it looks like the quartz were smashed into it. Yeah, so Michael likes that one right there. It's a little more green for aquamarine, huh? It's almost like a seafoam oh, yeah. green. I mean, the slow motion crash. Yes. Million year. Wow, that peachy fluoride, it just has this glow to it. We've got a very nice morganite specimen here. Look at that, it's, it's massive. I mean, with the all bite, oh, that, that white all bite. Kunzite. Kunzite is another one of my favorites too. I have small pieces on the website. It's a uh, pleochroic. So when you turn it different directions, you can you can see the color sort of shift. Sometimes if you look at it just straight on, it just looks more clear. You can see that in the center. But if we kind of turn to the side, you're gonna get way more color. Oh, quartz on aquamarine on all bite. That is a cute, cute situation going on there. <laughs> that, that quartz is just like perfectly perched on top of the aquamarine crystal. Aquamarine on all bite. It's got such beautiful aqua pigmentation, but it's super clear at the same time. This pink Jimmy Morganite. I can't stop looking at the Morganite. <laughs> Look at another bicolor aquamarine. I didn't even realize these existed. I swear, every time I come out at the gym shows, I'm discovering new minerals I never even knew. <laughs> we're out here in the world. One day I want to own one of these. A beautiful bicolor aquamarine. Look at that pastel pink. Is that not luscious and juicy? Wait until you guys see everything that I found though. Uh, it's gonna be going on the website. More gorgeous large aquamarines on muscovite. And then another morganite on albite with smoky quartz. This aquamarine is really interesting because it's almost heart-shaped if you look at it from the top. Even though it's not as clear and translucent as some of the other ones in the case here, it's really beautiful because it fades down to this frosted base, this frosted white, almost icy glacial base. It's almost like it's perched in snow. For it with a matrix of burrito. <laughs> <laughs> is that a munch? Oh, that is a beautiful uh, fluorite from Namibia. That's but a place I really want to go. Yeah. Maybe there, yep. I want yeah, to too. So too. many minerals come from there. Huh? Yeah. You seen that before? Is that crazy? <laughs> what the heck? Now, how did that form? It's a whole new type of uh, form of lightning melt glass. Good grief. So you like all that? the fulgurites that you normally see that are caused yeah. by lightning are like tubes in the ground. Yeah, yeah. This what happened here is that there was so much energy it actually the melt glass exploded in the air. Oh. And it fused melt glass in the air. And the big piece in the back is part of that effusion crater. That's so a amazing. A geologist friend of mine found it and wrote a big article on it about Rocks and Minerals magazine. Every time I come out of the house to the gym shows, <laughs> I'm learning new. about a yep. new mineral yeah. I've never seen. And for seen. me, after 25 years of Tucson, you know, there's always something new to learn. Yeah, right. Yeah, I like the uh, specimens that have a good story to them. In this case, what would you call your favorite? Hmm. <laughs> well, it certainly have to be one of, probably, uh, believe it or not, it's probably the orphan, probably the, the big yellow orphan down there at the bottom. Because I personally collected that. Did you? Yeah, at a 9,000 foot mountain. Where? In uh, the middle of Nevada. Yeah, that was and that came out of a 180 pound boulder. Had to etch calcite out of it. It was a lot of work. The the way, main way you can tell Elmwood is because it has the sphalerite matrix. All those brown crystals are only you oh, only see those that's in Elmwood. Tennessee. Oh. And then that one's Illinois. You know, the mines themselves are I don't know probably not more than 100 or so miles apart from each other. Oh oh, here's something else I want to show you too that okay. I have not seen. These okay. Are, these are rare. Look at these. 
silver nuggets. Yeah, they're actually silver nuggets from uh, Leadville, Colorado. Oh, wow. He says those are really rare. Just because silver tends to chemically decompose when it gets to the surface. So the nuggets will slowly dissolve and the gold won't. So the, the silver nuggets only have a certain amount that they can survive on the surface before they're oxidized and gone. All the, the gold is, is basically forever. So interesting. As well as geological curiosities. They never hardly ever see a, an actual real silver nugget. Wire see the, the wire silver? Uh-huh. Yeah, those are those are like pretty rare too, I guess. And yeah, they're so nice, expensive. Yeah, that tiny little one's yeah. 100 bucks. The smoky scepter in the back. That's really neat. Yeah, that's a really great piece. That is. Well, those are from Russia, and those started out as cuprite crystals, which you see kind of the darker crystals on the left there that form the octahedrons. Uh -huh. That one, uh, and cuprite is mostly copper. It's 89% copper, 11% oxygen. And sometimes the, uh, the the crystals will pseudomorph and revert to native copper. Oh, is that so right? That, that crystal that you're looking at in the front there, it looks like copper. is actually, they call it a pseudomorph, uh -huh. which means false shape. So it actually shows the octahedral shape of the cuprate that the copper itself in its native form wouldn't normally show. And if you notice there happens to be a little bit of air gaps on it, you know, this one right here in the front, uh -huh. they notice that it's not completely solidly replaced and that's because cuprite again is only 89% copper. So if you actually measure that, it would actually come out to have 11% pore space for the oxygen that was in the cuprite. I love that piece. The octahedrons in there. You know, pseudomorphs are a really unusual part of geology. Pretty. It's a bacteria that makes them pink. Oh, really? Oh, really? Yeah. So, you know, almost normal table salt, but the pink, you know, I don't I don't think um, we we digest the pink very well. <laughs> we tried to use it for table salt. He has beautiful grape agate here. Look how shimmery that one is. It's just got a really nice sparkle to it. Look at that's another really nice sparkly grape agate. All right, guys, we're at home, and I'm actually in our mineral room right now. I was organizing minerals, getting things into flats, and, oh, actually, you know what? I will show you this piece here. I was actually just getting ready to put this one away. It's a Musquez fluorite from Mexico. It's a really cool piece. I love this piece because it, it reminds me of the pyramids. So it's got, like, this multi-pyramidal top, and it's all completely stepped, like, all the way around the bottom. Let's see if we can get that to catch the lights. You can actually see all the steps on the bottom there we go it's a really nice piece like all the way around it's a really pretty piece i like to find minerals also that are very unexpected like when you look at this it almost looks just like it's black right like black pyramids but hang on one sec let me set this down on its foam i keep it on a piece of foam um, just to protect that bottom because it's so perfect on the bottom too so let me set that down. I'm gonna grab a flashlight. And it's a good size piece. It's about, well, over half a kilo, about 630 grams, I think. So let me just shine the flashlight on here and show you what the, the saturation looks like on it. Look at that color in there. You wouldn't expect that, right? Because it looks so dark if you don't light it. Ooh, right there. Oh my gosh, it's so pigmented. But yeah, it, once I get my display set up, um, our mineral display case, I will definitely be lighting up my fluorite from the back because it really displays your fluorite so beautifully. It just creates that beautiful glow when it's backlit. Hold on, I gotta show you guys this scepter. This is a Shungan Amethyst scepter. Look at that red hematite inclusions. It gives it that pretty kind of pinkish look inside, kind of a violet with little red specks. It's like glitter inside of it. And if you've gotten this far in the video, drop a comment down below and let us know what type of minerals you're really drawn to. All right guys, thank you so much for hanging out with Michael and I today. And I will see you guys in the next video. I'm working on a vlog today. I'm editing this video. This video is going up today. Tomorrow or the next day will be the vlog. All right. Love you guys. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.